Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying with Jim Ashura. Today I'm going to tie a gray fox parachute. The hook that I have in the vise is a standard length size 16 dry fly hook. The thread I'm going to use, I'm going to use Hemingway's 8 aught, and this is rusty brown. And we're going to attach the thread behind the eye and we're going to bring the thread back halfway and then we're going to move that forward half of that and that's where we're going to put our wing for our wing I'm going to use a mallard flank you can use a wood duck flank but with a parachute I really don't think that uh, it matters a whole lot because you're not gonna they're not gonna see the wing as as well but I took the this is just a standard you know a standard length if you could call it that uh, mallard flank and I took the fluff off the bottom now for the wing I'm gonna take about half of this and I'm gonna take about half of this off each side of the uh, stem. Let's take that and put that down on the table and they don't come apart very easily so putting it down on the table is not a big deal. Take the other side just pull that off and I just gathered them all together and now we'll tie these on we want that wing to be about the length of the hook shank. I'm going to take a nice loose loop. Keep that all on top. Give that a few securing wraps in back. I'm going to trim this off at an angle. Then we're going to take our thread and bring it back to the tail. Get that taper in there nice. There we go. And bring that thread to where it's going to hang just about at the barb of the hook. And yes, I left the barb on because the person I'm making these for wants the barbs on. I don't see a real big problem with the leaving barbs on. That little barb isn't going to do that much damage to a fish's mouth. Now for the tail, I'm going to take a ginger hackle. And it's just a barnyard hackle, Indian hackle if you will. And we're going to stand the fibers all up. Basically pull them off at a 90 degree. Gather them all together and pull them all off together and your tips will be aligned I'm going to measure the tail and that's about the length of the tail and I'm going to trim off most of this we're just going to secure that when I come back to, on the tail I'm going to have it nice and nice and together there. Take one wrap underneath the tail just kind of lightly and snug it but not too tight. And now I'm going to turn my fly sideways so I can put the dubbing on. And I'm going to use a lighter tan dubbing here. I'm going to use this one. The original pattern calls for light red fox fur and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be red so this light tan is pretty good this is super fine I'm gonna put on a really skinny noodle very skinny noodle you can see it's going barely more than the thread And 
we're going to wrap this forward. Back that off. There we go. Take that last little speck there and tighten that up. Then when we get to the wing, we're going to lift the wing. We're going to wrap several times in front to stand it up. Now I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap around the wing four or five times. You can turn your vise slightly sideways and it's a good idea to to hold it on each wrap it just makes it stiff and it doesn't let it slip off the top and of course when you're winding you want to go up with it I'm gonna bring my thread to the front of the wing and I have a ginger hackle this is actually a furnace hackle but I use, I'm using this because it's a really long saddle hackle and it's the right size and we also have a grizzly hackle and we're going to pair them up and you want to spoon them you don't want to have two concave sides like this you want to have them spooned We're going to tie these in. Get them lined up there. Oh, I grab the back section. There we go. And we're going to tie these in, and you can see those crew cuts are long. That crew cut is long. Long enough to go from the eye up to the wing and then up the wing itself you can see those crew cuts there still then we're gonna go up the wing and wrapping the hackle up the wing is also going to help to stiffen that wing post I'm going to turn it sideways and go up and come back down when I get back down I'm going to take the thread and make a head so I'm gonna build up a head right there at the at the by the eye now I have my thread back at the wing itself I'm going to take just another little speck of dubbing I mean this is small and we're gonna make another really skinny noodle get a little bit of moisture on my fingers there really skinny noodle and then we're going to wrap the area around the wing post shorten my thread there I need just a little, little, little bit more. That one spot on your side there, I want to kind of fill that in just a little bit. I have just another minute little section there. There we go. And when we end the wraps, we want to keep it on the wing post so my thread is on top of the shank and hanging on my side I'm going to widen this out a little bit now I'm going to take the both feathers at the same time here and I'm going to not pull hard but gently and I'm going to basically just put a little bit of a crease in there so now they're down now I'm going to wrap them and we're going to give it once twice 
and actually that's going to be enough on this one because we do have two feathers and that's like four wraps I'm going to wrap it around the wing post you want to make sure you get underneath the hackle we'll give it three wraps there snug that a little bit tight so watch you don't break your thread now we'll take our cuticle trimmer and we're going to get rid of them now I'm going to take my whip finisher you can use your fingers if you if you need to sometimes fingers are better I'm going to bring that X right up underneath the wing post I'm gonna make sure I get that thread under the hackle give it three now I'm going to before I pull it tight going to hold this I'm gonna put some head cement on the left side as I'm looking at it it's going to be on your right side and that is the side of the thread that's going to pull in first so as I pull it you can see it going up and I'm gonna go a little bit slow so I give that uh, head cement a little bit of uh, time to soak in pull that tight snug it there a little bit and then we can trim off that thread